Hi class, in this video here what I want to do is I want to go through the basic concepts of geometry and I'm going to go through these pretty fast because there's a lot of shapes and a lot of concepts to go through but as I do this I encourage you to pause the video and maybe try some of the problems as I actually give them. Okay, so our objectives here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the measures of angles, we're going to talk about perimeter problems, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll talk about area problems. Okay, so first measures of angles. So what, what is an angle exactly? So an angle is formed when two rays, so what an array is, it starts from one value, one point A, and it goes to another point, and it keeps going on forever. So there's what, what's called ray AB, and there's another ray called ray AC. So rays AB and ray AC start from the same point A. The point at which the rays meet is called the vertex of the angle. So this meeting point is the vertex. We use this symbol here. This is read as the angle and is used to name an angle. So we can refer to this angle here as angle A or angle BAC. Okay, so when you see it like this, it just means BAC. So the middle is the vertex or we can just call it angle X right there. All those are acceptable naming conventions. But whenever you see this sign, angle, think angle. Okay, an angle can be measured in degrees. Okay, so you might hear something like a 25 degree angle, 40 degree angle, things like that. So the symbol for degree is this little, little degree sign here. So um, a ray rotated one revolution about its beginning. So if you were to take this ray and go, all the way around till it meet, met itself again. This is what's called a 360 degree angle. So 360 degrees is one complete revolution. Okay, so the measure of an angle is symbolized as with the letter M and then the angle sign. So for instance, in this example down here, we have angle C. We would say the measure of angle C, the measure of this angle here, right there is 40 degrees. So we're going to read that as the measure of angle C is 40. All right, some other ones. So one-fourth of a revolution is one-fourth of 360 degrees or a specific what's called a 90-degree angle. A 90-degree angle is what's called a right angle. So this symbol here is used to represent a right angle. Okay, so perpendicular lines are intersecting lines that form right angles. So if you have line P and line Q, if they're perpendicular to each other, they form 90-degree angles. And we can write P is perpendicular to Q to indicate that P is perpendicular to the line Q. But the big thing to remember here is, is when you see this sign inside an angle, okay, looks like it's completing it as a little box or a square, that means it's a 90 degree angle. So if they don't have the 90 degrees there, but have this symbol, 90 degree angle right there. All right, let's talk about uh, what are called complementary and then eventually um, supplementary angles. So complementary angles are two angles whose sum to 90 degrees. So if you look at angle A here, angle A measures 35 degrees and angle B measures 55 degrees, okay? If you were to take those 35 degrees plus 55 degrees, you get 90 degrees. And what we'd say is that angle A and angle B are complementary angles. Also, one half of a revolution is one half of 360 degrees or 180 degrees. And when you have something that's called a 180 degree angle, like this, all right, this is just called a straight angle, straight angle. All right, so complementary angle sum to 90, 180 degree angle is a straight angle. Now we have something called supplementary angles. Now supplementary angles are two angles who sum to 180 degrees. So if you have this angle here, angle A is 123 degrees, angle B is 57 degrees, if you were to take the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, 123 plus 57, you get 180, and we would say, ha, because they sum to 180, these are supplementary angles. All right, let's do some example problems with this. So let's find the complement of uh, 39 degrees. So to find the complement of 39 degrees, well, we know complementary angles sum up to 90 degrees. So just back the 39 degrees out from 90. So 90 degrees minus 39 degrees gets me 51 degrees. And we'd say the complementary angle to 39 degrees is an angle that measures 51 degrees. Similarly, we can do this with supplementary angles. So find the supplement to 120 degrees. So to find the supplement or the supplementary angle to a 120 degree angle, just subtract 122 from 180. 
So if we take 180 minus 122, we have 58 degrees. So what we would say is a 58 degree angle is the supplementary angle of a 122 degree angle. All right, let's try this one. For this figure, all right, so we have this crazy figure looking here. We want to find the measure of angle A, O, B. So we want to find this little angle here, the measure of angle O. Well, what we can see here is the measure of angle AOC. AOC here, this line tells me that that measure is 95 degrees. And the measure of angle BOC, all right, that's 62 degrees. So then the remaining part must be the difference of these two. So the measure of angle AOB, you take 95 degrees minus the 62 degrees, and you get 33 degrees. And that's this measure of this missing part here. All right, let's move on and get away from angles and now talk about um, perimeter problems. All right, so what is a perimeter? So a perimeter is the distance around a plane figure. Okay, so a perimeter is used in buying fencing for a yard, wood for a frame of a painting, and rain gutters around your house. There's a ton of applications for it. So the perimeter of a plane figure is the sum of the lengths of the sides of the figure. Okay, so formulas for four common geometric figures are going to be given below. So I have all these different geometric figures. So here we have a triangle. So if I wanted to find the perimeter, I would just measure or add up the length of this side plus the length of this side plus the length of this side. So the perimeter is just the sum of the length of the sides. All right, um, so just two quick uh, triangles real quick. An isosceles triangle has two sides of the same length. So when you see that, an equilateral triangle uh, has all three sides are the same length. Now we have something that's called a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is a four-sided plane figure with opposite sides that are parallel. So this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So let's talk about some common parallelograms. So a rectangle is a parallelogram that has four right angles. So here, 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 and here are right angles. So the perimeter of this would be two times whatever the length is, because this length is the same as this, plus two times whatever the width is, because this width is the same as this width. So two times length plus two times width. So a square. Okay, this is just a rectangle with four equal sides. So it would be side plus side plus side plus side. So the perimeter would just be four times whatever the length of the side is. All right, so a circle is a plane figure in which all points are the same distance from point O, okay, which is the center of the circle. So here's O is the center, and it's just all the points around, around point O that are the same distance, okay? So the diameter of a circle is a line segment crossing the circle passing through the letter O, through the center. So the diameter is measured as the line that goes from A, goes right through the center to B, A to B. Okay, that's called the diameter. You'll notice here that I also have a line segment that goes from, from the center to C, but not through it. This line, OC here, this one here, is going to be called the radius. Okay, so AB is a diameter of the circle, all right? The radius of the circle is a line segment from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. So that OC that I was talking about is the radius of the circle right here, okay? And the perimeter of a circle is what's called its circumference, okay? So what a circumference is, if you were to start right here and walk all the way around the circle, that distance you would walk right there is called the circumference. So just some formulas. The diameter is equal to 2 times the radius, or the radius is equal to 1 half the diameter. So the circumference, which is the perimeter of a circle, circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius, okay, 2, two pi radius, or it's just pi times the diameter. And this is where pi is roughly equal to 3.14 or 22 over 7, okay? Let's do an example for some of this stuff. So a chain link fence costs 637 per foot. Okay, How much will it cost to fence a rectangular, rectangular playground that is 108 feet wide by 109 feet long? Okay, So I want to find how much it's going to cost to do this. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how much fence you have you're going to need here. So you're going to find the perimeter of that playground. 
And then what you're going to do once you figure out the total perimeter is you're going to multiply the perimeter by the price per foot, which we have here, of the fencing. All right, so the perimeter, we look back, a rectangle is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Well, the length was, length was 195 feet plus the width was 108 feet. So 2 times 195 plus 2 times 108 feet. That gets you 390 feet plus 216 feet. Well, when you add those two together, you get 606 feet. It's a pretty big fence. So now I know that's the total feet. So multiply that by the cost for, per foot. So 606 times 637. Wow, that gets me. This fence is going to cost $3,860.22. It's going to cost us a bunch. All right, now let's move in and talk about area problems. Um, so what exactly is an area? Area is a measure of the amount of surface in a region. All right, so area is used to describe like the size of a rug, a farm, a house, or a national park. So area is measured in what we call square units. A square that is one inch on each side has an exact area of one square inch. Okay, so that's one inch by one inch. And that is written by one inch, and then the inch sign gets the little squared notation. So one inch squared. All right, let me give you some um, areas of common geometric figures, okay, by the following formula. So if you have a rectangle, where the rectangle's length is 3 centimeters and its width is 2 centimeters, well, the area of a rectangle is just length times width. So you would take 3 centimeters times 2 centimeters. Well, 3 times 2 gets me 6. Centimeter times centimeter becomes centimeter squared. So a square... Remember, the square has equal sides. The area of a square is just side times side. So here, if it's a 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter squared, the area would just be 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters, which would get me 4 centimeters squared. All right, for a parallelogram, the base of a parallelogram is one of the parallel sides. The height of the parallelogram is the distance between the base and the opposite parallel side. Okay, all right, it is perpendicular, this height, to the base. So remember, this is what a parallelogram looks like. This right here is the base, okay? And the height goes from here all the way down. So the area of a parallelogram is just base times height always. So for this one here, if the base is five feet, the height is four feet, it would just be five feet times four feet. Well, five times four gets me 20. Feet times feet gets me feet squared. All right, a circle, all right? The area of a circle is a little bit different. Okay, this is just pi times the radius, whatever the radius is squared. So suppose you have a circle and we're telling you here that the radius is 4 inches. Well, pi is roughly 3.14. Radius, 4 inches squared. You would square the 4 first. So this would be 16 inches squared. 16 inches squared times 3.14 gets me 50.24 inches squared. All right, a triangle. For the triangle to the right, okay, how you find the area here, the base of the triangle is the longest side here, AB, right here, the base here. Okay, it doesn't always have to be that way, okay, the longest side, but it's just in this drawing it is. The height of the triangle is CD, so from here all the way down. All right, note that when you do this, all right, the height is perpendicular to the base. So the height of whatever triangle you pick, okay, that forms a right angle here. So for the following triangle here, all right, I'm seeing here that this base AB here is five inches and the height, okay, right here is four inches. The area of this triangle, area is always equal to one half the base times the height. So this is one half times five inches times uh, four inches is the height. Well, I'm gonna do it this way. Five times four gets me 20 times one half gets me 10 and then inches, inches, gets me inches squared. All right, let's just do a bunch of examples here, okay, just to get this idea home. So the area of a, find the area of a rectangle whose length is eight inches and whose width is six inches. Well, we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, so eight times eight inches times six inches, eight times six gets me 48 inches, inches, inches squared, gets me 48 inches squared. All right, find the area of a circle whose diameter is uh, five centimeters. Use 3.14 uh, Use 3.14 for pi. Well, remember that the area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So the first thing you need is the radius. Well, remember 
that the radius is equal to one half times the diameter. So one half times five centimeters, because that's the diameter, is 2.5 centimeters. So then our area is equal to pi times the radius. So I'm going to slip in 2.5 centimeters for the radius squared. You're going to do 2.5 centimeters squared first, and then multiply that by 3.14, and you'll get 19.625 centimeters squared here. All right, let's find the area of this parallelogram last, okay? So it looks like here we see that the um, base is 12 feet here. Even though they put it up here, it's the same here. So here's the base. They're telling you the height is 7 feet. So area of a parallelogram is just base times height. So 12 feet times 7 feet. 12 times 7 gets me 84. And feet times feet get me feet squared. So this area here is 84 feet squared. All right, class, I hope this helped. And um, I know there's a lot of formulas, but as you go through the class, um, you know, just have those formulas handy with you.